Hi everybody, Coulter Brown and Andy Schwab here with your Farm and Ranch News. Today we've got a special show for you. We're coming to you from Sydney. We're on our For the Farmers Tour. We've been touring all around eastern Montana, looking at a lot of different operations, delivering free lunches to producers, and we have a great event at the market in Sydney. Andy, this has been a lot of fun. I mean, what, what do you think of eastern Montana so far? Well, I, I've said this many times to a lot of producers that Sydney, Montana is very much like Powell, Wyoming, my hometown. They grow sugar beets here. There's, this is a very sugar beet raised community for many years. They they use irrigation. Oil fields very big in Sydney, Montana. Sydney and Powell, Wyoming are very similar. I've actually been calling Sydney Powell, uh, or the, I've been calling Sydney the Powell, Wyoming of Montana. Well, I don't know how they feel about that in Sydney, but I know it comes with love from you, Andy. This has been a fun event. Really what it's all about is supporting our farmers and ranchers, celebrating the work that they do to feed and clothe the nation. And here, harvest is not over in Richland County, really just kind of at a pause right now, about to start cop chopping corn. And so going to be a lot of fun. But we want to bring in some of our sponsors that have helped us pull this event together here. Let me call over Mark Martin with Mountain West Farm Bureau Insurance. He's been a, a big supporter. Mark, you had a lot of agents come on the tour here today. What did you think? It's so great to be able to celebrate what these producers do. Well, thank you for having us. And yes, uh, this is what we do is help take care of farms and ranches and families. And so, yeah, it's a wonderful thing. And as you think of the challenges that these producers face, I mean, battling drought, grasshoppers, I don't want to talk about prices hardly, but they, they're sure battling a lot. They need the support of these businesses because farms and ranches are kind of the basis of, of the economy for a lot of eastern Montana. Well, they are, and, and then also the fact that that's what we do is help protect those families. And, yeah, look around here. Look at the machinery and the buildings and uh, getting these crops to the, to, the, to the elevators. So, yes, that's what we do, and uh, we're just here and happy to help, and we love our farmers. Well, we certainly appreciate your support, Mart. Thank you so much. But I should mention we are here at Keld Johnson's farm here, Andy, and we've so appreciated Keld hosting us, but really one of the ones making it pull all together. I mentioned the market in Sydney, but also Watkins Distributing. Absolutely. Watkins has been a great partner for this as they've been putting together a lot of lunches and they've really been right there with us hand in hand and, and just making sure that they understand that they, they support the farmers because they couldn't do anything without uh, where this without barley. There's no beer and with us now, <laughs> Justin with us from Watkins Distributing and Justin Stryker. This uh, this producer event has been uh, one for, I would say, the record books. Uh, second year in a row, you had the opportunity to be part of this uh, year over year now. Uh, how's it been for you and, and your team? This has been great, man. I mean, you know, just going around, visiting with the, with the farmers across the whole countryside here, you know, and just building that relationship with those guys. We've had a great time. It's been a great time for sure. Is there has there been anything that stuck with you? I mean, there's certainly been a lot of farmers. We've seen a lot of different diversity in the crops that we've uh, talked with some of the producers about that they raise. Has, what's one of the things that you're going to take home and, and take back to your team and be like, did you know? Yeah, you know, I mean, just, just with the guys here, with every single farm, it's just the, the camaraderie, you know, and, you know, the good attitudes that these guys have, you know, they're, they're getting tons of things thrown at them, you know, with the weather changing every single day, hailstorms, whatever, and, you know, you come and you talk with these folks, and, and they're just in a great mood. I love it. It's a great mood for sure, as Justin Stryker from Watkins Distributing has mentioned. Watkins Distributing has been a huge role to getting this For the Farmers Tour put together. But, you know, as you mentioned, we've had the opportunity to be here at Johnson's Farm. It is very meticulous. This is one of the most beautiful farms I think I've ever been a part to, to have the chance to look at Coulter. And I, I'm really proud to be here, here at, uh, as we wrap up this tour. Well, it just has been so much fun to get out here and see some farms. I mean, of course, we were on Steinbeisers and Salvivolds. We were at the UGC Grain Elevator, EGT. But here we are at Kel Johnson's farm. Kel joined us over here. Thank you so much for hosting us first off. And, and thank you for what you do to, to raise these crops and support the economy. Glad to have your boys uh, join us here. But we talk about all the challenges. How has this year been for you? There's been a lot of headwinds perhaps, but here as you're uh, at the end of the growing season, how do you look back on 2024? Well, I'm kind of relieved at this point. Um, we we had a lot of drought. We had a lot of, you know, basically stress going into it. And now we're where we can see the end of it. And uh, of course, I'd like prices to come up a little bit. But in all fairness, it was an average year and we're, I guess, ready for next year, like every other farmer. But uh, we're okay with what it is. But it's a challenge transitioning from sugar beets to other crops, but I think we're on the right path. So 
like from a family standpoint, we're going to continue to do what we do every year. Well, that has been a challenge for a lot of Richland County as we move away from sugar beets. With Sydney sugars going away, um, how are growers handling it? You've kind of been a, a leader in, in the sugar beet industry in the past year, so now that chapter is closed. What, what, what are we moving forward with? I think everybody has to make their own path. Um, I think the majority, everybody jumped to corn, beans, some pinos, and it's going to work. But as a group, we have to find out how we market, how much we can spend, where we go from here, but we're going to figure it out. And I, I think that everybody's going to find something different, but it's going to result in that we have to make some changes. And um, some of us will, some of us won't, but the changes will come and we're going to continue. Well, I think that optimism is needed, especially if you're going to farm in eastern Montana. But for you to have your boys here on the farm with you, I mean, you're thinking forward. You're thinking, what does this operation look like for them and their kids eventually? And really, that's that's why we're in this industry. Yeah, I'm only here for a short time. I mean, I guess I've been here a long time, but in reality, it'll be their turn at some point. Um, and so our plan is to find a peaceful transition and set them up for the, you know, for the for the next step. But uh, and they're part of it from from day one now, uh, even at 15 and 13, they they see what we do. They see the financials, they part of the harvest. They they, they do everything that needs to be done on the farm. And I hope that in, you know, in a short period of time, that it's my turn to be the gopher guy and uh, that they can step up and make the decision after college, after travel, after whatever else they need to do in life. But there there's always a home here. And uh, my goal is only to maintain that until it's their turn and then I'll gladly step back. Well, Kel, thank you so much for, for hosting us here. Andy, it's been a real treat to be here in, in Sydney for our For the Farmers event. Uh, we're gonna come back here after just a quick break and, and take a look at our market, so stay with us. From the beginning, we've worked closely with farmers. BNSF's ties to the agricultural community go back 175 years. Together, we've innovated to make the U.S. agriculture supply chain one of the most efficient and productive in the world. Our strong relationship powers BNSF still today and helps us move the nation like no one else can. At BNSF, we move the nation for you. Well, we're turning back to look at our markets here. Cattle futures actually had a positive day. Now, that's four days of increases we've seen the feeder cattle put together. $8 gained here in the last four days. Now, there's still a lot of ground to make up from where we were six weeks ago, but at least moving in the right direction. Live cattle also finishing higher. They're probably 2 to $3 higher for the week. As we move over to look at the cash-fed cattle trade here, a little bit lower on the live sales this week with most of your trade coming in from 180 to 181 Dress trade actually stronger so far from 290 to 294. In Torrington this week, another yearling feeder sale. The market just a touch softer. Some of those eight weight steers selling from 234 to 243, nine weights 231 to 233. On the heifer side of the trade, we saw the eight weights bring in 221 to 234, and the nine weights 212 to 219. Now to talk about our sheep market here, we're going to go to Andy Schwab because, of course, you were at the Ram sale this week in Mile City. Yeah, we had the opportunity to stop by there on our way through to this Thank the Farmers or For the Farmers Harvest Tour. Is we had the opportunity to speak with our former farm broadcaster, Leif Bakken. He was there to buy a, a, a few sheep, and he actually got that job done, he said. But he sent me some of the averages afterwards on the 11th annual U-Cell for the Montana uh, wool growers. It averaged right at uh, $350 a head, right at $350 to $400 a head depending on where you were at and what breed you're looking for. Uh, and of course there was over 400 of those ewes offered at that Montana ewe sale. And then also the day before that, as we call this kind of sheep week, if you will, as this was uh, the Wyoming stock grower, or the Wyoming wool growers, they had their 96 annual ram sale. Average came in right at about $1,000 a head, maybe just about 10 to 15, maybe 20% softer than where we were at a year ago level, but certainly uh, as expected with a lot of uncertainty in the sheep markets as well. And when you turn to the, uh, the grain markets as well, well, the grain market's certainly seen uh, their ups and downs yesterday as we did see the USDA come out with their latest World Ag Supply and Demand Estimates report. They called for a record large yield on that corn production this year. And surprisingly enough, that actually didn't affect the grain markets too bad as usually when we see something like that come out, it does. But when we turn to some of the prices, as we go to the cash grains, we'll go to Portland. We'll talk about those prices as the 12 Pro winner, we did finish their day just about two pennies softer, 636 to 646. However, the cash grain of the uh, the 
14 Pro Spring Wheat, <laughs> they did a good day. They had a nickel stronger yesterday, 682 to 692. When you look at those cash grains in Portland, as that spring wheat certainly had a great day in comparison to what they could have been in a slightly bearish, uh, not necessarily bearish, but maybe a neutral WASI report. You bet. And we'll have the grain, uh, the wheat numbers, I should say, at the end of the month with a small grain summary. So a lot to watch for there. Andy, it's been so much fun being in Sydney and going around eastern Montana here. Thanks so much to the Johnson family for hosting us and all the farmers we got to see. We appreciate what you do. Thank you to our farmers and ranchers. That's going to do it for today's Northern Ag TV. I'm Coulter Brown for Andy Schwab. This is the Northern Ag Network.